That's it. Understanding the Bible ambassador's assembly. Hey, hey, hey. Right, right here in Clayton, Clayton, Delaware, 355 West Duck Creek Road. Uh, service has already started. Now we just uh, opened up the session to continue to move forward and allow the online guests to come in. Uh, we are now about to continue to allow the Lord to further cultivate this ground and get ready for his word by taking uh, work to another level. Amen. So again, welcome. Bring up our worship team. Because it is way 
better. And my words can't even come to me. It is way better for people for our needs to bow on this side of life than it is for people's needs to bow on that side of life. Amen. Because when that side of life happens, they need their needs gonna bow and they gonna need it's not gonna be a good thing. We don't want that to happen to people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Alright, in the meantime we got our children's generation, our children's generation, our children's ministry, children's generation, <laughs> children's generation, <laughs> children's generation. <laughs> we love the kids, we love the kids. <laughs> Glory to God. They are just so excited. We just love them. And our blood is just Pray be blessed over the children of the Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for using the diet, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for all that she is, all that she has been, and all she's going to continue to do, Father, and all through you. Please continue to use her, Father. Please speak through her, Father, to impact the lives of these kids, Father, and herself, Father, for your glory. We have to call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Let's get ready. Well, let's get ready. Let's get ready for our pre-registered charge. As we flow, you can reference James 1, 22 through 25, New King James Version. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, stuff of the Bible, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed with what he does. So when we get together, whether we're selling online or selling in person, we want to make sure that we are hearing the word, because faith comes by hearing. So we want to continue to hear that, which includes the action as well. But we also want to do and apply it. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so that's what, and we'll talk about obedience to Christ. But that's one of the indicators that he's looking at. So who, if we love him, we are to do his word. That's one way he's saying you show me that you love me when you do what I tell you to do. Amen? So we want to not to be hearing of the word. We want to be doing of the word. Amen? So that being the case, I'll be ready for the, the message. We want to make sure that we are clearing our hearts and minds, getting ready to take notes, uh, do your screenshots and everything else, because we want to make sure that we are saying, all right, I want to commit to do at least one thing that I'm going to start applying this week. Amen? Uh, we want to say, all right, we want to assemble. We want to not just be here in the world. We want to be doers. So we want to do that. Amen? All right, so now we've doing our multi-empowerment series, equipment training series. Today we're talking about victory and daily roles. Victory and daily roles. Uh-oh, young adults, we come down your road today. All right? <laughs> victory and our daily roles, in particular, we focus on young adults. Now, don't turn it off anyone that's not a young adult because there are principles in here that we all can apply, I guarantee you. Amen? Amen? So don't turn it off. All right, now, foundation scripture. Uh, Psalm 119, 105. All right. Psalm 119, 105. New Living Translation. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Amen. Yeah. So we have to understand the word of God. Praise God that he would love us so much. He knows this world was given over after Adam did the fruit. And so he said, i got to give them some people and some things to help guide them down here in this world that's been turned over to sin. He sent his son, he's given us the Holy Spirit, and he's given us his written word and said, hey, here's a path that you can follow. Lord, that's a, that is a good thing when we don't have to guess everything. We don't have to guess how to be a day. We'll talk about that later. All right, all right now. All right, so God's intention, again, for this monthly series that we, that we go over every month, but different pieces, um, how to get results in the Bible for our everyday life. That's one piece, is that how to get results from the Bible for our everyday life. It's not for the Bible to just sit and it's be a spiritual esoteric word. No, it's, it's a living, breathing word, so we are to chew and eat on it so we can get results from it for our lives that God be glorified. And then also, a judgment, a judgment point series, that we understand that with our relationship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the written word, we have everything we need to get victory in every circumstance and get victory in every role that we play. We have to understand that. But that's his purpose for this series. Amen? All right, now, let's reference 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, New Living Translation. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, New Living Translation. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. That's a good thing. Because we don't want to keep doing wrong. We want to find out, like, it's, and it's okay when you find out, oh, I didn't know that was wrong. That's a good thing, because now it gives you the opportunity to stop doing it. That's a good thing, all right? 
Um, it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it, about the word of God, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Amen. So we got to thank God the fact that he would love us to give us his written word. Amen. All right, now. Let me to embrace and mature and do this by faith. Let's reference sec- I mean, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Amplified classic version. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. Amen. So when that reference is, it is talking about physical child, but it's also talking about uh, one that's not yet mature in doing things in the word. And we're talking about a uh, man, we're not talking about just the male man, we're talking about one that is growing and maturing. So what it's saying is, when I, when I was immature in some ways, so we're not talking about just by age, when I was immature in some ways, I did things that immature people do. See, but, but once I became mature in these spiritual ways, I no longer did those things. We went and embrace it and say, that's me. I, 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 I put away things that I used to do. This is so don't get too caught up in the word child, because that's, that uses a metaphor there. Both reality and a metaphor there. Uh, but it's saying, hey, the things that I used to do when I didn't understand some things in the word, I no longer do now. All right? Amen. So all I'm remember this, you see the note down there, spiritual maturity is not based on age, yeah. nor is it based on the number of years you've been going to service. Spiritual maturity is not based on age, nor is it based on the number of years that you've been going to service. It's based on you choosing to understand simply God, apply the word, and do the word actually when you don't feel like it. That's maturity. We'll talk about that too. Doing the word when you don't feel like it. Amen? All right. Now, we understand that based on our life's choices and savings that we did, we play different roles. Sometimes we're the husband, we may be the wife, we may be the you know, bad guy, maybe a young adult, maybe a youth. So in the various things in our lives, we understand we fit into different roles that we play. They either based on choices or just based on who we are. And sometimes we're in more than one role. Because like, for example, I'm both a husband and a father, but they are separate. Does that make sense? God holds me accountable for <laughs> what he instructs me to do as a husband. Separate from that, he's holding me accountable for what to do as a father. Amen? And so we have different roles that we play. So this series is to help us with these different roles that we're in how do we get victory in these roles? Because circumstances come up just in these roles. There are challenges that are presented to me just as a husband. Well, i got to deal with those just as a husband. Amen? Just being a believer. Amen? Often being a believer. All right? Now, sometimes and we may have heard this with different things in our lives. We may have heard, Dad, I, I really wish there was instructions manual on how to be a mom. You know, I really wish that. You know, I really wish there was instructions manual on, you know, how to be a husband. Well, I know that's a popular thing to say, but it's more cliche because it actually is not the truth. The truth really is we actually do have an instructions manual on how to be a mother, how to be a husband, how to be a father, how to be a young adult. We actually do have an instructions manual on how to do these things. Why? Because God loves us to give us some instructions. So we have to dispense with that cliche and say, okay, now let me actually open up the instructions manual and learn how it is. Because always remember this, God is the manufacturer. So we want to find out how to be a young adult. We want to find out, you know, how to be a youth, how to be a mother. We need to go to what the manufacturer says because only the manufacturer can tell us the best purpose of a thing. All right. So now you can just reference some proof texts to show again the Bible is an instruction manual. You can reference Second Timothy three sixteen, reference Joshua one eight, reference John four fourteen twenty six, and you can reference Psalm one nineteen one five. Some of we already went through. Again, this is some proof text. That there's principles that says there are some instructions manual on how to do some of these roles. Amen. Now, we talked about this before, and we're going to continue to go through it. So, so what are the five steps? What are the five steps to get results from the Bible for our lives? We talked about this, we've got to continue to keep doing it so it stays ingrained in how we do it. Amen. Now, number one, we said first thing we want to do is we want to take, so when we, regardless of the roles that we in, so let's just say, let's okay, let's just take me as a husband, okay? So I want to learn how to be a husband. And let's just say there's a challenge that comes up as a husband. All right, well, one of the first things I want to do is I want to open up my physical Bible and look in the back. And we're going to, we're going to make this real plain. You're going to look in your physical Bible. Now, preferably you want to research and maybe purchase a, purchase a study Bible because in the back it'll have a concordance or a dictionary. What you want to do is you want to think about the circumstance you may be going through. So let's just say, 
as a husband, I'm like, let's say I have some issues with uh, anger or something like that. Well, I'm like, now, I want to look up. I want to go to the back of the Bible and look up anger, right? All right, now, this is what you want to do. Now, in today's times, I say physical Bible, just make it basic, but now we, we know in today's times, we also have use of technology. We can look on things like Bible Gateway and Blue Letter, Blue Letter Bible and those things. You can actually even look on a natural source like Google and find out scriptures, but you want to go back and double check it and make sure they're accurate. Uh, but you can look to find out those same type of things. So if I'm a husband, I'm going through a challenge, I look up where are some of the scriptures that deal with being a husband, amen? So I'll just look up, I'll just put the word husband down there, amen? Now, once you find those scriptures, you want to write them down. You want to write down what do those scriptures say about being a husband? What do those scriptures say about you know, being angry? Amen? That's step one. Now, step two, it's not enough just to write them down. Now I need to review them. Now I can even review the scriptures that are listed in this particular case about what does it say about being a young man? What does it say about being a young woman? All right? Sometimes you may see for young women who are the young adults, you'll see them as classified as, as maidens. All right? So, you want to look in the Bible and say, all right, now if I'm going to if I'm a young adult, I want to look at the scriptures that deal with being a young man or a young woman, all right? Uh, once I've looked them up, now I'll write them down, okay? Especially the ones that, you know, that don't make you always feel good, amen? We want to be one and grow. You know, sometimes, <laughs> oh, it doesn't remember, <laughs> back in the day we used to get cod, cod liver oil. Oh, my, and castor oil. It tastes nasty. But our parents said, it, you know, it helped us, yeah. But, so sometimes the, the, the things that, that help us the most don't, may not always taste the best, but we know they're good for us, you know what I mean? I like greens, but I like, actually like Brussels sprouts. But I know that everybody doesn't like Brussels sprouts, but they're good for us, amen? Same up with All right, number three. Now, step three is we have to choose to believe the scriptures. So you look them up, you write them down, you review them. Now you got to now you got to go to another level. You got to choose to believe the scriptures and it, what it says about being a young adult. Scriptures that are about young adult and stories about being a young adult. You want to choose to believe them. Okay? So God bless you. So the doctor is none about this about that. Now step four. Now you want to get a couple of those. I, I say at least, at least one to three, but you can get more. At least one to three that you want to get into your heart. So you're a young adult. You're looking at this. You say, okay, I want to learn about being a young adult. So. Boy, I have a little scripture about being a young man, being a young woman. I looked them up. I wrote. I written them down. Now, oh, excuse me. I'm going to take time and choose to believe those scriptures. And then I'll say, all right, now I want to get them in my heart. Well, how do I get scriptures into my heart? Well, we talked about this before. It's a two-step process. A, choose to believe the scripture. And then B, you have to, you have to keep saying it. Keep saying it throughout the course of the day. Wow, that's God's law of repetition. The more you hear something, the more you have to believe it and do it. So scriptures, you want to choose to believe them, and then you want to choose to, and then you want to choose to keep saying it, repeat it. That's how you get scriptures in your heart if you're looking at that you're young adult. All right. Now number five. Uh oh, y'all know this. Now we gotta finally we gotta actually do the scriptures. Okay. Now we're talking about getting results from the Bible for our lives. So do the scriptures. Now you said A. You want to make sure so we're so if you're a young adult. And you're presented with a challenge. Let's just let's just use intimacy. Let's just say, you know, that flesh is drink and you're trying to have some sex. Okay? Well the thought is presented to you. I say it that way. The thought is presented to you that try to have some sex. Sex and we understand the Bible says it's not a good thing to have sex outside of wedlock, right? So that being the case, now in this case we're talking about uh, a young girl who's not necessarily married. So in that case, so the opportunity is presented to you by a thought to want to be intimate, to want to have sex. Alright? So when that temptation comes, now, how do we do this? We want to replace that thought with a scripture because we have to renew our mind. So when the thought comes, let's just say sex, and I'm a young adult, like I said, I abstain and shrink from sexual morality. So, because now what I'm doing is I'm renewing my mind. Yeah. We actually are doing the same exact thing that Jesus did when he was presented with temptation in the wilderness. When the devil came to him, he came to him with thoughts. So Jesus didn't get to a big debate. All he said was, for it, for it, he just kept saying, he just kept saying the word. So we have to, have, but Jesus had the word in him. He had already done steps one through four, right? He, got, he had the word, he already knew the scriptures, he got him in the tar, he's already believed him, he's already doing steps one through four. Now Jesus is doing part five. He said, no, let me say the word. So when, when that comes, you got to be able to say a scripture that you, one of those one to three that you've already researched. Because in that temptation, the devil doesn't play fair. It's not like he's going to send an alarm saying, hey, I'm coming to tempt you. He's not going to send an alarm. So you've got to already have it 
in you. That being the case, when that thought comes to, to you know, to want to have uh, sex, you got to say, uh, and, you're, and you're happy not to be married, you got to say, nah, you got to pick one of the scriptures. Let's just, let's walk the wrong one. I have stayed in the street from sexual morality. All right, so now you're saying that. That's the thing. We're doing the same exact thing Jesus did. You can reference Matthew 4, 1 through 11. You can reference Luke 4, 1 through 13. When we're doing that, we're doing Romans 12, 1 and 2. We are renewing our mind. Because when we first got saved, you know, before we got saved, having sex seemed like it was a cool thing. You know what I mean? And so we got to renew our mind because now our body may be tempted, especially if you've already kind of opened that door. So we got to say, okay, I, I have to look at this. I have to look at this the way God looks at it. And if he's looking at that as sin, not that sex is a sin, because sex is great, but marriage, praise the Lord. All right, but if it's outside of marriage, we got to say, all right, well, wait. We got, we said, we, if, if God doesn't like that, then we got to not like that. So we have to renew our minds. And Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, Bible also says, if we submit to God, resist the devil, he's, a, he's guaranteed that he will flee. So when we submit to God, we're saying, God, we're going to do it your way. Then when we resist him by saying our scriptures, when the thought comes, the devil is guaranteed to flee in that moment. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Now, that's a good thing. Now, Again, it's talking about how to do the word. That's A. Now, B said, at that same time, as I was saying in the scripture, I was saying the truth from sexual morality. Now, I start also meditating and thinking about blessed things. Think about the last time you scored 30 points in basketball game. If you're a young lady, think about the new dress you want to get. Right? And for some reason, <laughs> it could be in some new boo-boos or you know, pursers or something like that. So, I'm going to top Michael Kors and all kind of person. Shout out. You hear all the ladies shout out, right? Okay, there you go. So you can be thinking about these, these are blessed things because God knows you, you, you're a good steward of his finances. So he doesn't mind, I was just giving you richly all things to enjoy. So he doesn't mind you enjoying those things because he knows your heart also is to sow and be a blessing to people. And to this, through his kingdom, amen? So that's not, so as you think, I'm saying straight from sexual morality. Now if you're a young lady, you think about, okay, at the same time, I'm visualizing that new person. I'm visualizing my wedding day. That's a good thing. Because when you're doing that, you're hitting the devil with a one-two punch. You're both speaking a word like Jesus did. And you're doing Philippians 4 and 8, where it says, whatever things are true, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are a good report, meditate on these things. So these are the things we should be meditating on daily throughout our lives. So when you're doing that, you're doing a one-two punch on a devil. Amen. That's fucked up. Good thing. And then now, see, now we're actually doing the action. So why do we do it? I have stay in the street from sexual morality. So you might make a face. Like, oh, I have stay in the street from sexual morality. You might just turn on, you know, turn on some prayer and worship music. Now you're doing the word. You're saying it. Oh, my God. And you're, you're meditating on something blessed. And now you're actually doing it by staying in the street from it. Oh, my God. You're doing that. Oh, now all you got to do is just keep repeating A through C. You do that, the devil is guaranteed to flee in that moment. But guess what? He's a devil. So that means he's going to try to finish you again. So, guess what? Jesus didn't change his mode of operandi. He kept doing the same process. So you keep doing the same exact process. Glory to God. And what you will find is over time, as you continue to spiritually mature in that area, that gap in time will, will widen and widen and widen between the time that the enemy tries to mess with you. To the point where he says, I can't, I can't mess with him in that area no more. Let me find some other area. That's a good thing. Amen. I mean, you mature in that area. And I say that, Aaron, that's for all of us. We all gotta do that same exact process. And if you say young adults, this is for all of us. I don't care what age we are, amen? Yeah. Now, young adults. So, here are just some foundation checklist pieces for you. Alright, so just some things you might want to just keep in your repertoire about things we should be doing this as a young adult anyway. You say young adults, this is for all of us, alright? One is you know, being single minds, being single eyed, uh, meaning keeping your single focus on God, being making God your top priority. You can reference Matthew 6 and 33. Again, keeping God your top priority if you're a young adult. Another thing for young adults, again, studying the word and rightly dividing it. You reference 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Also, we talked about this before, so monetary, the lifestyle. Again, so if you're a young, you know, young adult, I know sometimes you've just got your job and those kind of things. You want to, the Bible said, he was he that gave you power to give it. Well, they established his covenant. covenant. So don't forget God. So if you're a young adult and you just got your first job or whatever, Oh, don't forget God. Amen. He's the one. He both protects your finances and advances you in them. All right? So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You can reference Malachi 3, 8 and 12, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7, and 10. Yeah. Another little checklist piece. Again, review and speak the word. Reference Joshua 1 and 8. Living a holy life. 
Now, holy does not mean, okay, maybe this clear. <laughs> holy does not mean you have to wear turtleneck all the way up to the top of your forehead and, and skirt to be a lady all the way down to the tip of your toenail. Holy does is not about the dress part of it. It is about your heart and a lifestyle of living holy and being more and more like Jesus. Amen? Um, so, that, so, so wearing a dress down to your toes by itself doesn't make you holy. Does that make sense? Now, if God told you to do that, that's, that's, you know, that's fine. You obey God. But by itself, the action doesn't by itself make you holy. Amen? We add, as a believer, we are holy already. We continue to grow in being sanctified in that. Amen? Um, also, being a duo over and not your own. Uh, we talked about that, as you already know. And then making disciples, making co learners of Christ. You know, being around people doesn't mean you have to hit them with the Bible, but you live your lifestyle. You share things that you learn, things that you that God has helped you through. Give them some tips, give them some nuggets as God shared with you. Now you're making a co learner of Christ. And you're, you're, you're being used by God to, to sal help Him through the Holy Spirit salivate someone and make them curious about God. You're letting your light shine. That's a good thing. That is a very, very good thing. Now, did you know, in his instructions manual, depending on which translation, there are about 121 scriptures that deal with young adults, under young men, young women. So there are about, probably about 121, depending on your, your, which translation you're using, about 121 scriptures that deal with young men and young women. Oh, that's, that's, that's a thing. So, so again, going back to the instructions manual, you can't say, I'm a young adult. There's nothing in there about how to be a young adult. I don't think there are. Look at the category of young men and young women. Now, here's just a few references. Here's just a few references. 2 Kings 22, 1, 3, 20, and in 23, 1 through 3, we're going to go through these. All right? Now, jo now Josiah, his, his, his dad wasn't about loving God. Let's give you a background. His dad was about loving God, but he was just the opposite. He was a king. Um, Ammon, and he, you know, he was about the country, he was about bad stuff. All right? So now Josiah, his son, is now being made Josiah the king because Ammon got killed. <laughs> so, Josiah comes on the scene, we'll pick up from there. In verse 1, uh, Josiah was 8 years old when he became king. In verse 3, it says, Now it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah. So that tells us when what's about to happen, that means he's 26. Uh oh, I'm a young adult. Oh, okay, I'm around that age. Okay. All right, so 26. Okay, all right, so I'll see what's happening here. So now let's, let's pick up verse, uh, chapter 23, verse 1. Now the king, come on, Josiah, said that, oh, let me get some backdrop. All right, so Josiah was, was, was loving God, and so what he did was he, was, he was in the process of having the temple of God rebuilt. And so when he said up to the, the high priest, he said, I see, his heart was good, because he said, I see people laboring, I see them working, and he said, give them, give them money. Give them money not only for the tools and equipment, but give, give them money. So he's already trying to be a blessing. So, and what the, the, what the man of God, the high priest says, well, okay, got it, and here is the word of God, all right? And so, he gives the word of God to one of the servants, the servant comes back and reads it to Josiah, and Josiah's like, whoa, revelation happens, because now he's like, I didn't know this stuff. He was already loving God, but now he's learning more about God in the scriptures. He's saying, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know all this. Now, he's feeling kind of challenged by the fact that his people, the children of Israel, we're so disobedient to God, and he's feeling you know, like, Dad, why haven't we gotten this thing right as a, as a people? He's feeling upset. He said, we got to get this thing right. we got to start loving God. And we pick up here in chapter 23, verse 1. Now the king, come on, Josiah, sent them to gather all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem to them. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and with him, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant. Because now he's learned. He's like, we got to gather up. We got to stop us up. So God, we got to get this thing right. We got to do better than what our forefathers did. All right? Um, this book of the covenant, some of the Bible, uh, which had been found in the house of the Lord. All right? Then the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commandments. And his testimonies and his statutes, some of God's testimonies and statutes, with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant. I mean, uh oh, see, now he's reading and committing the guy who's going to uh, read and understand. Now he's saying, uh, and, and to perform it, he's, he's also committing that he's going to perform and do the word and do the words of the covenant that were written in the book. 
And all the people took a stand for the covenant. Oh my God, this guy was 26. So that tells me, okay, young adults, we can make sure we have some relationship with God and, get, and we can be an instrument that God can use to help draw people closer to God. He moved his whole kingdom because he said, wait, I understand people in the past aren't getting this thing right. No, we're going to take a stand. I'm getting everybody. I'm getting everybody. It's small, great, prophet. Hey, bring, bring them all. We're going we to learn a little bit more about this book of law. We're going to make a covenant to God. And we're going to say we're going to do our word. And we're going to take a stand for God. Amen. Guess what? Again, he was 26. The young adult. Shout out at you. All right, now. There's another reference. Let's look at 1 Timothy 1 and 3. 1 Timothy 1 and 3, New King James Version. As I urged you when I went, this is Paul talking to Timothy. As I urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they may teach no other doctrine. All right. So what Paul was doing was Paul left Timothy in charge. He made him like the overseer over the church of Ephesus. Wow, goodness. That, that means that book when you see in Ephesians, he was like, okay, I got it. All right, now. That, that's reference down here, 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Let no one despise your youth. And in Greek, it's about Neotis. I'll talk about that in a second. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. That Greek wrote word Neotis, we got to understand that during that culture and time, a youth was, can be anyone up to age 40. So from that perspective, what Paul was saying is, People that were older than that age thought of themselves as being more wise. And part of the age also was part of it at that time. Paul said, Paul said, wait, whoa, don't let your youth make, don't let them think that you are less than because you are young. Now we talk about young, again, up to age 40, this is the point. He said, no, 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 because I understand what God has put in you and your spiritual maturity, like we said earlier, isn't just about age. It's about you doing, doing being sincere in the Lord and applying the word. So guess what? At this time, based on this, he put him in charge of the church in Ephesus. It said that uh, Timothy was around the age 30 at this time. Oh my God, I mean, he's a young adult. Paul's saying that even though he's around the age of 30, and Paul puts him in charge of an overseer over the church of Ephesus, and other people maybe looked at him as you, Paul put him in charge because he knew what God had in him because he was spiritually mature. Oh my God. Young adults, shout out at you again. All right? Again. Here's another example. Let's look at Jeremiah 1, 4 through 8. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 8, New King James Version. Part familiar the scripture. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, ordained you, a prophet to the nation. Put a pause right there. I don't care how you came into this world, whether it's through parents unintentionally saying you were an accident, I don't care if it was through people that were divorced, I don't care if it was through rape. None of that matters because God had a plan for your life. Amen? He has a plan for you. So you, it doesn't matter how the circumstances were. If you came into this earth, God, it didn't surprise God. God knew and he had a plan for you in this earth. So you receive that and you give of God. Amen? Glory to God. God is perfect for your life. Then Jeremiah says, Then I said, Ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, but I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Yeah. Poor God. Now, Jeremiah, around this time, this is the Old Testament, around that time, with regards to youth, they looked at youth during that time, with regards to being aged between 17 and 30. Poor to God. So, Jeremiah was, what well, we might look at as, as, a, as a young adult. Poor to God. God says, whoa, whoa, don't, don't despise your, your, your age. I'm going to use you. And guess what? He's in the book. <laughs> he got his own book, Jeremiah. You know I mean? So, so I think again, younger adults. These are a few examples to say you can do this. Always remember, it doesn't matter your age. Don't think that because you know you're not a certain age or, or because you're not young anymore. Well, whatever, whatever you, things that may try to enter your mind, God can use you. You just please continue to be sincere, loving the Lord. Now we understand what we're saying, young adults, is a false scriptures. But these principles are for all of us. Amen. 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 So we got to understand that. So young adults, again, 
let's make sure this dude is mine in charge. But we got to understand that God has a purpose for your life. And young adults, you can take time, open up some scriptures, learn more about both scriptures about being a young adult and about uh, people in the Bible about being young adults. And you can pull from them about how to continue to grow in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, these series are always about empowerment so we understand that we can have victory in every area of our lives over every circumstance, including the roles we're in. Amen. Give God glory. Amen. Right chart. Now, we always want to say, we want to make sure that we are choosing to say, all right, cool. Uh, whether I'm young adult or not, I'm going to choose to be applying this word. So I, I got a couple things I'm going to start applying today, this week. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's live. Let's give God a Lord God. Hallelujah. All right. So, now, that being the case, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you for setting this time aside, Father, for us. Thank you, Father, for your word, Lord God, that we are just continuing to grow in you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for guiding us to apply your principles, regardless of our age, to just do the things you want us to do, Father. And it's all about you. Glory to God. It's time of life. It's time of life when we believe, God, Father, your word says, it was long life you satisfied. So we believe for the long life, Lord God, and that you want us to occupy so we come. But we know it's also about the eternal. So we'll talk about that as you leave, Lord God, with regards to our eternal reward. The things that we do now, not only for our time here, is also to stake claim for different things, which are rewards you want to give us on the other side of life as well. So we thank you, Father, that kind of to do our eternal account as well. We ask we call it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we just, uh, all hearts and minds clear. If there's anyone that uh, doesn't need to prayer for anything, let's stand with them with regards to uh, some salvation. If there's anyone that needs to see Jesus or Savior, anyone wants to. We dedicate their lives to the Lord. Anyone that needs uh, to stand in 